Scrapwood challenge, scrapwood challenge. It's crack, it's crack, it's firewood, but some of the wood is good. If you haven't already seen, I made these Lego blocks a couple of weeks ago. And even though they're quite cool, they're just not accurate enough to use as a regular block. So what I did is I forced them together to make, make, and I'm going to mount these on a board, on a sign, and I'm going to put it on the wall. I think that'd be quite cool. But in this video, I'm going to try and make the blocks more accurate and have another go at it. So I've had a better think about it. And also there's been some good ideas in the comments. I've taken those on board. So let's give it a go. Here I am again doing the same process as what I seem to be doing on every one of these videos and that's turning the scrap wood into square stock. I'm going to race through it in this video because most of you have already seen it all before. In the first video, I used the dowel plate by using the hole I needed and hanging that over the end of the block here and driving the dowel blank through that. And then I'd unclamp it, move it to the next hole and clamp it again. That got time consuming. So I've just spent quarter of an hour just throwing this together and it works a lot better. It's a lot quicker. Also in that video, I used the socket on the end of the dowel blank and that worked fine, but you have to whittle a bit away on each one, hammer that over and it's hard to keep it centered, even though you can manage and it does work. Instead, on this one, I've made this thing. It's just a bit of box section. I've welded a nut on the end of it and then put a bit of threaded bar in there and put a few tacks in there to hold that in place. I've hammered the end of the faces over just so it grips the dowel blank nicely. I'm not gonna get that in there now. Yes, I will. There we go. So that holds it and that's a lot faster and it's centered. If you don't weld, you could make one like this. Just take four blocks and glue those together around a piece of your square stock. Put a cap on the end and a bolt in the center so you can put that in the chuck of your drill and I can't see why that wouldn't work. I've got these holes on the end here to check how I'm doing for size when I'm sanding it. And when I think it's close, that's a bit tight, so I'll sand a bit more. Check it again. And that's perfect. And it actually leaves a really nice burnished finish on there. They really have come out very, very nice. Now I need to cut this stock up into bricks and I'm going to do this a little bit different to last time because I'm cutting the bricks first oversized and then with the jig that we're going to make later we'll trim them down to the final size afterwards and I think this should work. So at the moment that is 31 and to give me a little bit of room I'm going to make them 28. That means the opposite uh, dimension needs to be double so that'll be 56 so I'm going to cut them at 60 millimeters. I've just taken one of the blocks and I've found the center and from that I set the dividers to 14 millimeters so I've made a mark from the center that way and one that way and just to double check that that's 28 millimeters which is what we need and it is I've glued a dowel in this piece of plywood and now I've drilled the first hole on the first block. It's quite tight, but it should loosen up a little bit. Then I can position that, clamp that down and then go through and drill the rest of them.
Now we need to make a simple jig to cut these blocks down to their final dimension. I've just taken a scrap of plywood, I've run that through the table saw so I know these two edges are parallel with each other and that's important. Then I've set my marking gauge so it's a few millimetres past halfway of one of the blocks. I'm going to run a line down one edge and then with my square and a marking knife, I, it doesn't matter where you go, but somewhere along there, I'll make a knife cut as well. Then with an awl, I'll mark a hole right on that corner there. And then the little marking gauge that we made earlier, I can put that in that hole, making sure it is in that hole. And then with the other screw, I can feel where it is along that line. I'll give that a little tap. And then again across the line that I made with the marking gauge and I can feel that in that line as well. And there we have it. We drill those out now and put some dowels in. This is the piece that I just prepared with the dowels and it's become a bit of a contraption and that's because I've added a sleeve to go across the fence and I put a hinge and a block here with this handle on and the idea is, is we put a block in, we run it through the saw and trim it up to size. So the handle's there just to hold on to it and make it safer. Before I made the video I tested this idea out and I just used this one here, ran it along the fence and uh, I'll just show you, I had the block on there and I just held onto the block and did it but you may not be comfortable with that so I thought I'd better show a safer way of doing it and this should work I didn't bother showing how to make it because it's pretty self-explanatory I'm going to take a little bit off at a time keep moving the fence over just a touch until I get them just right Hopefully that's in focus and you can see that that's just under 28, which is what I want. And the idea being is it needs a little bit of wiggle room because when that sits across there, two of those, it needs a little bit of room in the middle. And that may not even be enough now. So I'll make a few blocks first, see how that goes. And uh, I can always nudge it over a little bit more. And next I need to trim the ends up and that's what this stell here is for. I was getting a fair bit of tear out on there, so what I've just done is moved the handle over slightly and now that will give it a bit of backing and hopefully reduce the tear out. I've just made a few of them before I get too far ahead of myself and while they're still not 100% accurate they are a lot better and they are usable so I think I can keep going and make the rest. In the first video I was sanding the dowels like this just by rocking it while sanding. They were time consuming, they didn't come out very good and after a while they were difficult to hold on to. So what I've done for this video I've made this thing here, it's just a corking nozzle. I've made a few cuts in the end and pushed a bolt through there. I was going to glue that but there's no need because when you chuck it up it pushes the plastic against the bolt. I've cut the end off just to the right length 
and now I can chuck that up in the drill and hold a bit of sandpaper against it and that's much faster, much easier and it does a better job. I was going to sand the bottoms by hand, but I've changed my mind. I've got a chamfer bit in my trim router. I've also drilled a couple of holes in this bit of wood here, and that's just so I can hold it, and my fingers are a little bit further away to make it a bit safer. <laughs> This is the first time I've put them together. They didn't need a mallet this time. They all worked really well. Some were a little bit tighter than others, but they'll loosen up with some use. And they hold together really well. There's just enough friction between the dowel and the hole. So I'm really pleased with them. You may notice that there's a fair gap between the bricks, but I think that helps with any inaccuracies and also any expansion of the wood. I'd say it's just about impossible to get them 100% perfect with normal woodworking tools but they came out pretty good and I'm happy with them. The main thing is getting those two holes the same distance apart and that's pretty difficult to do. I tried all sorts of different ways to do that. The drill press, my chuck, the spindle has got a little bit of wobble and that doesn't help. Uh, also I tried just uh, marking the two holes and with the point of the force and a bit just drilling them separately without any jig at all but that didn't work out very well they were off a little bit so this was the best way I tried drilling pilot holes and then with the uh, force and a bit I drilled in from both sides but they didn't turn out as good either so the way I did it was the best way for me anyway hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did please like and subscribe thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one